Hey, listen, can you make coffee using a sock? You bet you can. Find out more here on Bean Basics. Oh, hey there. Welcome to Bean Basics with Bob and Michelle. Welcome to Sunny Saugatuck and welcome to the Elvis Lab. Hey, listen, today we're dedicating this episode to the El Recreo Coffee Estate. I think it just says El Recreo Estate here, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, uh, and they are a farm direct partner of ours. But what I'm dedicating to them is this idea. Often when you go to a coffee producing country and you, you go to the airport, you go to a souvenir shop or something like that, this one happened to be gifted to me, you, you get a little contraption that looks like this. And, and you can even see this one has uh, the El Recreo uh, uh, name on it. But it's essentially uh, a stand uh, with, with, a, with a cup. It's, it's not usually wooden. Uh, this, this is more symbolic. But uh, you have this uh, bag, essentially, right? This cloth bag that sits on top. And the reason that this is a souvenir is in a lot of coffee-producing countries, this is how they made uh, coffee. So it wasn't paper filters using the V60 or something like that. It wasn't the Chemex using Chemex filters. The filtration method was this idea of a sock sitting on a wire, right? And, and that wire at one point in time might have simply have been a hanger that was bent, right? It was using the tools that you had at that moment in time. And uh, I've always appreciated getting this particular gift, but last time we were in coffee producing country, in particular uh, Nicaragua, uh, I said, hey, I, I want one of those because they, they still use them. Um, and when, uh, when I go to coffee producing countries, not just Nicaragua, I've been in Honduras also, at the farm, sometimes they'll still use this. Now, they don't use this at uh, El Recreo, but uh, I've been on a farm recently and they use this. A lot of farms today use uh, a French press, right? So uh, that's a pretty simple method, doesn't use a paper filter either and so on. And then of course farm coffee uh, or coffee farm, farm coffee? Co farm coffee, farm coffee, coffee, coffee farm. right, yeah. Either way. Uh, which is a lot like cowboy coffee, uh, except they add sugar into it. It's something you see uh, produced in the kitchen uh, for the workers and that kind of thing. And actually we have a blog post on that if you go to our blog with a recipe. Yeah, then the blog is onebigislandinspace.com with two G's on the big, just like this right here. So, uh, you know, how does it work to use a, a, a cloth filter versus a paper filter or a metal filter or a ceramic filter or whatever? Uh, that's what we're just going to discover here today. So I'm going to boil some water. I've got 500 milliliters of water right here. I'm just going to get it into I'm using our Narita travel kettle uh, to kind of simulate, you know, instead of like a, a, a traditional kettle like this one right here uh, that we would find in our finer coffee shops, uh, I'm more simulating uh, stovetop boiled water, right? Because uh, that's, that's more likely how that would have been done, right? There would be no kettle, it would just be boiled, maybe even on an open fire. Okay, so uh, let me get that uh, fired up, no pun intended. So 500 mils of water, we'll use our standard recipe, which is six grams per 100 milliliters. And so I should have 30 grams, 30 grams and I have 29.9. And that's gonna have to be close <laughs> enough. Now, uh, this is Big B Best, which is sitting right here. And the thing about Big B Best is one third of Big B best does come from this estate in Nicaragua. So that's pretty interesting. I'm going to go ahead and grind the coffee and uh, Carter's going to remind me I've got to spritz this and the only reason we give it a little bit of a spritz probably wouldn't happen on the farm is uh, to reduce static clean in the, the grinder itself. The, the farm would probably use a hand grinder. Okay so uh, let me get this fired up. And of course, we don't have to do much because, uh, you know, we don't like to listen to coffee grinding. So I've already uh, pre-ground uh, 30 grams. Now, the one thing that I noticed when, when I tested this is the flow rate was really fast, right? So if you, I mean, if you pour water in, it just runs right through just like that. So 
Uh, the one thing that I did uh, is I tightened the grind down a little bit. So I might have used something closer to an auto drip uh, off, off the gate, uh, so to speak, off the start. Uh, but I took it down to a grind that's about a, a, a V60. And, you know, one should preheat this vessel. I'm not going to do that today, but I just, for everybody that's going to call me out on that, I want to get that out of the way. I'm going to put this coffee in here. And of course, you always want to give your coffee a shake so it levels out and gets to the bottom. And our water's to the boil. And, you know, technically you're not supposed to boil coffee water, uh, but this is... This is how it would have come off the stove. I think my glasses steamed up a little bit. <laughs> so, um, but we're going to go ahead and exercise a bloom. So I'm just going to pour a little bit of water in first and just let that water uh, absorb a little bit in the grounds, let the grounds hydrate a little bit. Uh, and, and that'll make it when we add our water. And we're not going to use any particular technique here other than just pouring it uh, right on. There we go. You're still kind of going all the way around though, right? I do. You know, when, 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 you, when you run water through coffee, you're trying to do it as evenly as possible, right? You don't want to create like a uh, pour to the center and then you create a little divot and it bypasses a lot of the coffee and that kind of thing. And you want to be able to spread it around as much as uh, possible. Okay. Now, I'm using a Chemex here, uh, which you wouldn't find on the farm, right? You, you would just be doing this into a, a container. Uh, that's how that would go. The flow rate is still pretty fast here, uh, but we're almost through our 500 mils. Boom, okay, all done. And it'll take a moment to, to have the balance of it drip through. You can still see it dripping through uh, a little bit right there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the thing about a farm direct relationship, and, and we've had this one since 2019. 19, 20, yeah. 19. So we're on our third year, uh, is what, what we do is we try to eliminate all the steps in between a farmer and us, the retailer. In other words, take out the brokers. And there's some money savings in there. And what we try to do with that is push that down to the farmer and make sure that the farmer is being paid a sustainable price. And so in this case, we're, we're paying El Recreo a sustainable price. Now, the thing that we're looking for in a farm direct relationship is three things, really. One, are they treating their people right? You know, are they paying them good? Is there no child labor? Are they treating the planet right? In other words, using organic practices, paying attention to the soil biome, composting, shade grown, things of that nature. And then the final thing is, are they investing in their community? And this particular farm invests in their community in spades, primarily through education education of young children, but also the broader community. It's pretty remarkable. So uh, we're all done here. Is this an acceptable method? Well, the answer to that always comes to what does it taste like, right? So uh, any, any, any cup of coffee can be brewed in any method, but the question is, does it taste good? And we're going to find that out right now. So I'm going to have my first sip of, uh, well, technically I did this before so I could figure out the grind, but I'm mm -hmm. going to have my first sip of sock coffee. <laughs> Here we go. It's a very good cup of coffee. But, of course, it's Big B Best, and it has coffee from Nicaragua in it. I have a question. Yeah. How are you going to wash that thing? Because you don't want to run it sure. in the laundry, right? Yeah. No, th this is... So this, this, the sock method does have one drawback, right? So now you can take this right away and, and, and dump these grounds into the container where you save for composting yourself, right? And then you just want to run this under some warm water, right? And then there's two choices you have. You can sort of, you know, I often put it on a shelf and, and just let it dry out in, in open air because you really need to let it dry all the way, right? Sometimes there can be bacteria and stuff in, in coffee, and I don't want to gross anybody out, but if you keep it damp like that, yeah. uh, it, can, it can get a little gross on you. Now, the most recommended method, but too fussy and would never be done on a farm, is to take, um, take that, rinse it out, 
And when you're done, you would just lay the whole thing in water and put that in the fridge. And that is, that is the best way uh, to preserve it and, and keep things from growing on it and that kind of thing. So um, that's a little trick we learned from uh, James Hoffman. But that's, that would be the method you would use for a cloth filter. Gotcha. Yeah, right on. So I think that's it. Uh, we really appreciate our friends at the El Recreo Coffee Estate in Inotega, Nicaragua. And we think about them all the time. Uh, we saw them recently uh, this year, and we intend to go back. Uh, I think it's December. Yeah, we're going back in December, but I think there's another trip in September. In too. September, right. So uh, we'll keep you posted on the blog. Uh, we like to write stories and updates uh, about what's going on in the farm. Hopefully you'll join us there. And until that time, I want to leave you with this one note. And that is when you love the world. The world will love you right back. Right on. <laughs> hey, thanks for joining us. For future episodes, click the subscribe button. Bean Basics is brought to you by OneBigIslandInSpace.com with two G's.